Good evening and welcome. We're here uh, going to work on this belt pattern. This is a flower and leaf belt pattern straight from a uh, leather tooling pattern book, which there's a link available in the description there to that if you happen to look for that. But otherwise, we're just going to roll right through this pattern. I'm going to talk to you about a few tips and tricks as we move along and hopefully give you some pointers that you may be able to use in this pattern along with some of the other stuff that you're doing. Uh, and if you're not a tooler and just like seeing how this stuff comes about, well, hopefully you'll find some value and entertainment in this video. All right, good evening, good evening. Appreciate you guys all jumping on here. I hope you guys are all off to a great start to your week. Uh, whip this pattern around here. I uh, kind of keep moving it as I'm cutting to always be pulling those cuts towards me the best I can. Um, that way I can can see what's happening there. stuff situated around here I had things sitting right in my way there so good evening good evening hello try to keep up with comments and questions the best I can here try to keep on uh, keep an eye on my screen there as well as my leather and what I'm doing but appreciate you guys joining here I kind of know know some of you guys so I See, so you're kind of joining from all over. From right here close, just an hour or two away to uh, clear over in Australia there. Up in Alaska. So awesome. Appreciate you guys all joining on here. Now, first tip of the night as I'm making these cuts, when I'm coming around these... Uh, I'm gonna see if I can tip this up just a shade. There we go. I don't keep going out of frame on you. But when I come around these tight little curves here, instead of trying to keep that knife blade in there and turning around that little corner, um, I don't like tearing up that leather any more than I have to there. So I always come, almost pick that knife up and start again. Now you don't have to. That's just something I like doing. I find I get... A little bit cleaner cuts that way. Um, then when I come back and bevel there, everything connects in there um, and makes some really nice points to it. Move that up out of the way. All right, hello, hello, Texas as well. Bob, I see Bob on here. He's just a few hours away as well. All right, we're going to work through a few different bevels tonight as well. Um, yeah, a few different sizes that these little, uh, these petals here that, that are kind of scalloped around the end there and nice little round uh, scallops on the edge of those petals. I'm going to pull out my really tiny little small bevel um, to get around those and show you how how well that does um, making it around there. Uh, hello, hello from Kansas. All right, glad to have you on here. Just try. Where else? What other states have we uh, not uh, not covered yet? Oh, thank you, Jason. I appreciate that. Tell you what, good knife makes it makes a big difference in that too. Um, all right, 
get that cut in there. I like this pattern. It's, you know, it's, it's really pretty simple. Um, like all the patterns that I have in that book, they're all uh, set to be simple patterns, but, um, but the, it has the, the look of, of being pretty intricate once we tool it up. Um, this, it's wide enough that you can run it on an inch and a half belt, like what I have here is an inch and a half wide, but it is narrow enough. We can, without even adjusting that pattern, narrow that up a little bit, um, you know, to go on a inch and a quarter bracelet or something like that. Oh man, you guys are all over tonight. This is awesome. Missouri, West Virginia, Michigan. Stacy, you ain't far away. <laughs> Ohio, Florida. Amazing. Love it, love it. Okay. We're gonna uh, start right up here. I'm gonna go around. This is a, uh, so this is a Berry King XX Steep Checkered Bevel. This is the zero, zero. But does a great job getting around those tight little curves and not having to worry about that um, kind of chainsaw effect chewing up <laughs> around there where you don't want it to be. Um, so I really like it for around these types of little flowers here. And it does take a little bit extra time, but it seems to be well worth it. Um, and the time makes up for itself too when I'm not having to go up and, and clean clean up going over a few different times um, to try to smooth out any rough spots by using a bevel that's actually too big for the job that I'm trying to do. Yeah, Josh, you like you're liking your new bevels, huh? They do make a big difference, don't they? Okay, and with all my tools, I'm gonna work my way around. And I'm gonna go down my belt one way and then turn that around. So I'm getting all of the all the places I can reach uh, and still be able to see that bevel face while I'm on this side of it. Um, and then we'll switch it over or switch that around. I'm trying to get around this camera where I'm not, uh, I'm liking this camera angle and the height on it, but and honestly, my left shoulders just about hitting one of the handles on the stand here. So hopefully I don't move it around too much on you guys. But I appreciate you bearing with me with all my uh, trial and error of the camera angles and the different stands that I use and we're trying to try to make it just better and better for your guys' viewpoint uh, and hopefully get the most you can out of these videos. Like I said, whether you're looking for the kind of tips and tricks and are a tooler yourself or if you just like hanging out and watching and seeing the process, I wanna give you the, the best look at it you can. Um, I'm not doing, not into all the, the secret stuff. It's not like I'm, telling you oh it's real easy just do it like this and not showing you like I want you to be able to see the best we can as we're doing it <coughs> excuse me As we're going along here if you guys have any questions or 
um, or thoughts, let me know in the comments. I will try to keep up on those the best we can um, while we're live here. Uh, if you're catching it on the replay, uh, feel free to comment on there as well. I do try to go back um, as soon as I see those comments and, and reply and answer any questions we can, both here on Facebook as well as on YouTube. Um, these We've been working through this series and, and tooling through all the patterns that I offer for sale and kind of giving a little bit of the tutorial side of it and showing little tips on it here and there and um, I'm all these videos are moving to my YouTube channel on uh, just under my name Joe Meeling M-E-L-I-N-G and that way I wanted them to be able to be easy to find for you guys uh, so also on the YouTube channel we're putting them in different uh, playlists as well like the the specialty patterns both the chief and the buck and horse we had to break those down into a few videos so those are in in their own playlist for you to um, hopefully be able to just to find really easy and and refer back to okay so there i've gone through with this little bevel everywhere i'm going to reach um, with it on that side now we're going to flip that around oh i i not quite everywhere Guess I better get right up here on this guy. Got ahead of myself just a little bit. Now there where that line's uh, not quite as tight of a curve, I'll get that with my bigger bevel when I come back around to it. The main thing I want to get just right up around that, that little tight curve there. Okay, now we'll flip it around and work our way back down. when I'm beveling I want to keep it to where I can see the flat face of that bevel um, I don't want to be beveling that side of a line where it's blind to me uh, it's way easy to run run off of an edge run over a line uh, get a choppy line we can't see how smooth your bevel is so I mean even right there it looks like it's kind of backwards to me but I'm I'm actually leaned over to the side here a little bit to look around the camera so I can see that bevel line still and that flat face of it. Okay, move my way around here. Like I said, this bevel, it takes a little extra time, but I think it's... I think it's worth it for the nice clean bevel that it gets you around those tight curves. Um, Bob, great question. How do I prevent a checkered bevel from dragging? Um, the how severe your checks are on there is going to be one big thing. Um, some some bevels you get are really. Um, rough on there which can make it make it a little bit challenging but the if if you have one that's that's way too rough you can get a like a super fine emery paper um and and just barely buff that edge um or those checks and that and just lightly and that'll help a little bit to kind of smooth those off um, you don't want to smooth them all the way out, but you can do that just a little bit. Um, but then also as I'm moving along there, being pretty cautious about the fact that I'm not pressing and holding and trying to pull it through there, um, which I believe is a, is a, is a real easy mistake to make at first. Um, you're wanting to, you know, try real hard and hold on super hard. So yeah. Um, you're pushing down as you're dragging along there and and that can can cause you some issues there but 
when you hit, you're letting that, you gotta let that tool up out of there to move it along. Um, even more so than, I mean, you have to do a little bit on a smooth bevel, but you especially have to do that when you're running a checkered bevel like this. And if I get going fast, it doesn't look like I'm letting it up really that much. It just kind of looks like it's moving right along there. But if I slow that down, I am actually pulling that up a little bit out of the out of the leather there to help walk it along. Um, okay, Bob, there, Barry, Barry King. So yeah. Um, you know, sometimes you get get a little too much checkering on there. I've done that, just taking a light emery paper and just barely brush those off. This little one, I didn't have to do it on. Um, I think one of my bigger ones of his, I did that on. But um, so maybe it could be a combination. You could have one with kind of a little deep checkering in there, or um, you could be trying to hold that bevel down pretty hard. Um, coming across there as well. Okay, we got those little lines all cleaned up. Hello, hello, see a few more of you guys popping on here and joining. Appreciate seeing you on there. So, like I said, a little extra time, but super worth it with, uh, with the nice lines that you can get with that little bevel. Now we can step it up from the double lot to the number two. This is again, a, um, the XX Steep. But now I can work along here a little, goes a little bit faster now. We can cover a lot more ground. Yeah, yeah Bob, you have a death grip on it. That, that can happen. So yeah, try, try just when you move along there, Bob, to hit down, let it come up, and then move along there. Um, oh, you bet, Jason. I'm happy to, happy to be helping, helping out and hopefully, hopefully you guys get some, some good from it along the way. Um, the mall, this, uh, Dave, I feel like I'm doing a Barry King commercial. This is a Barry King mall that I have. Um, the weight on it, oh, let's see here. Which weight would this be? It is probably, I'm going to guess a 16 or 20 ounce. <laughs> um, without getting the scale out, I couldn't tell you for sure, but it's one of those two. It's one of the kind of the small ones. It's not the extra small, but it is the, it is a small one. I have, uh, have a couple other sizes of his as well that, um, all great and it's it comes down to personal preference to whatever feels good to you um i have a super big um super big mall that i like for you know if i am going to do a a basket stamp or something like that because i can just chunk chunk and it sets them in there pretty good and i'm not having to swing it as hard but if I'm going along here and beveling like this, I don't want that big heavy mall. I want a, a lighter one that's easier to, to work around here that I can lighten up and fade some lines really easy. Um, you know, there'll be, there'll be days if I'm running a batch of belts in through here that I may just have a beveling day. I could be doing nothing but beveling for hours on end. Um, so to run a big heavy mall, just gets to be a little little much um, that can kind of wear you out a little bit right. um, how do you keep from getting choppy that um, that's a good question as well and probably probably the best answer would be a lot of those days 
um, that I have to just bevel here for hours and hours <laughs> has been has been a lot that's helped that. But um, fundamentally, how do I keep from being so choppy is taking taking small bites um, as you're moving along. You know, I don't want to try to hit it down and move that full bevel length because you can see that's where where it's way a lot easier to get choppy through there. Instead, think about how far you're moving that over. I don't even go a full half, not even a quarter. I, I almost go like an eighth of the width of that bevel almost. It's I just barely creep it over there. Um, and that's how, if I slow that down a little bit, but I get in a get in a routine and a habit to where um, you know you get that that rhythm going and it and it looks like you're just running it right along there, but it is actually taking little steps as you go there, uh, kind of combined with that picking it up out of the leather and letting it walk along there some. Um, let's see, what did I miss a couple questions here? What is the significance of using a checkered bevel versus a smooth bevel? Um, the checkered bevel, I like, um, I like a lot because it helps the, it helps my finish have something to grab a hold of. Um, you're, you're going to still get some burnishing from a smooth bevel, which the burnishings being the, that dark color that you're seeing. That's, that's coming from the moisture content in my leather. Oops, kicking the camera there. And, and you can still get that with the, with the smooth bevel for sure. But my, I, I use all, my finished process is going to be to oil this and then do a lacquer and an antique. Uh, and then come back with a final final finish coat on there. And that antique, I think, really grabs in a little bit better with the, with the checkering. I think it gives just a little bit more dimension to it. So, um, and that's kind of how I, the, the tools I had learned on. Um, and so I have come to really, really like that and come accustomed to them. Now, not to say that a smooth bevel is wrong by any means. That's just not what I personally use. Uh, oh, D.W. Davis there. Thank you. Um, glad they're, glad you find them, uh, find them easy to learn from. That's good. Hopefully, uh, hopefully you guys continue to find stuff worth, worth learning on here. That'd be, that'd be an even bigger bonus, right? Just appreciate you guys taking your time to hang out with me on these videos. Um, I know everybody's got busy lives and things happening, and uh, so it's pretty pretty humbling to see that uh, this many people from all over the <laughs> all over the globe really um, want to hang out and. And really just hang out in the shop here with me as a tool, so it's pretty fun. Uh, all right. Mr. Joe Schusler, you guys need some shaps made. There's your man. See him popping on here with us. Uh any plans doing a video on the painted background, Josh? That's funny that you mentioned that. <laughs> we ju uh, I just did a video uh, the other day in the classroom about the the painted backgrounds, and I almost did one tonight on here. Um, but yeah, we can do a painted background one for sure. This this next bevel uh, that I'm moving to is the rounded bevel. Uh, this I love this. Um, I love this bevel. I, I use it kind of in place of a lifter uh, as well, but in these little tight round places, it works awesome. Uh, let's see. 
Trying to keep up on comments here as well. Oh, wow, Jason, 18 year break from carving. <laughs> That's getting back into it. That's amazing. And, uh, and a break for, for the military. I thank you for your service. You and any other uh, service members on here, I sure appreciate that. So honored to have you on here with me. Uh, videos on the oil and antique process. Yes, I do have some videos on that. Um, easy to find. Maybe not as much. <laughs> uh, there'll, there'll be some videos back on, uh, if you go back in the news feed on, on my Facebook page here. Um, I believe I also have a, kind of a short, uh, some short videos on Instagram going over that. But um, I do plan in the future here to cover some of that on some videos where, um, where those will move over and live on YouTube for easy easy access um, but they're not up there yet um, as of the date today when i'm recording this video so um, but we'll work on getting some more of those as we go along here um okay <laughs> you don't want to get me to get lonely thank you wanda i appreciate that okay people talk about moisture in the leather a lot that's a big question i get you know how do i case my leather and all that so this was wet down before I started. Um, I had just wet it down and went to tooling. We've been, I don't know how long we've been on here, but been jabbering at you a while. So it's starting to dry out and I can, I can tell that by, by a few different things. One, looking at it, seeing that color. Two, the feel of it as I'm hitting my tools in there, I can feel how, um, how resistant or not that leather is. And then three, the sound of it when I'm hitting there. So all a few things that tell me that's getting a little dry real simple i'm just going to wet that back down here um there's some some of the old saddle makers and stuff just hate that idea of re-wetting your leather down um, they want you to case that all before get tons of moisture in that to where you don't have to be wet that which i completely understand because um, they're wanting to get all the coloring naturally out of your burnishing and you can lose some of your coloring when you re-wet that leather. However, um, we just talked about using that different finish process with your antiques and oils and things like that to where I'm going to get all my color from that anyhow. So if I lose just a little bit in the burnishing because of, of re-wetting that, it hasn't affected me to this point. So um, we just... Uh, continue continue on with it but i let that i just wet that down real light just plain water again um, and then i'm watching that you can see that color start to to turn a little bit especially like here where that smooth part is you can see that starting to lighten up still a little dark around those edges but it's it's starting to soak in there really well and i can just let that sit for about that long just kind of a quick second there and then go right back on to tooling with it so i'm going to switch over here to whoop, try not to throw my tools around to a vertical lined thumbprint meaning it's hard to see with the zoom on here but um, the grooves on this tool are going vertically right along with with the length of that tool um, and it's a little bit wider on this end than it is this end here. So um, you can fit into a couple different sizes of, of areas. But um, as you'll see here in a minute, I run this tool quite a bit. Um, this is my smaller one of the two that I have because I have some smaller ridges and things to get in here. Um, I'm going to use it a different way. I'm going to use it as a leaf liner right here on these leaves and come right next to that stem. And just walk it right down there. Lines that stem of that leaf. Now they do have a tool called a leaf liner. 
that has the vertical lines on it like that, but it has, instead of the, the round in there, it's actually angled off there and flat, so you can roll along, along there. You may ask, why did I not grab a leaf liner? Well, because I didn't have one when I started tooling, I learned how to use my thumbprint to do it, and I've just come accustomed to that, so I do it all the time. Um, you had to come up with a bull rider floral pattern. Bob, no, I have not yet. Um, that is definitely one that's on the list. Um, it's been a high request for a, a new specialty pattern with the bull rider, and I think that uh, that's going to be a great pattern. I just have not got that done yet. Um, I, I have some new patterns in the works that are coming out. Um, I have... Uh, couple that are coming here shortly and that are that are just some belt patterns um, some actually non floral belt patterns I think this is the first time I've even mentioned it um, but a little more uh, I have one that's an oak leaf and acorn another one that's uh, um, a feathers and vine work Kind of put together um, so I want to give give a belt pack that was some options that are not the traditional floral stuff that I have on a lot of a lot of the other packs so um, that will be coming out um, soon that'll be probably the next thing that rolls out um, followed by the um, my actual tooling course, Fundamentals of Floral Carving, and that, uh, awesome, thanks, Juan, appreciate you being on here, <laughs> go feed those critters, um, the, that course, uh, would be the next thing coming out, um, and then from there, I'm gonna start working on building some more, or drawing some more patterns, and getting, uh, getting those out there so that bull rider that we talked about bob that is definitely high up on that list um to to get released i think that's going to be a cool pattern <laughs> josh yeah we got an oak leaf one coming up um back i think i got it sitting right here we'll uh I gotta finish the line art on it and then get a get a tooling sample, but I'll give you a brief. There's a sneak peek for you, Josh. <laughs> that's uh that's drawn up and ready to go and but I wanna before that's released I wanna get a like I say we'll get the line art to where it matches how all the other patterns are as well. Um without all the shading and the extra scratch marks from me drawing it. Um, but then I want to get the, the sample piece tooled up to where you get the, the picture of not just the line art, but the tooled, the finished tooled piece as well. Um, so we'll have both of those in the, in the digital download, just like the, um, how the pattern's in the book where you can, see that finished look and all the specialty patterns are like that as well right now um, but i want all my patterns moving forward to have that finished tooled piece in there with them or the the picture of the finished tooled piece so we'll get that done and then um and then we'll go live with a couple couple tips and tricks on the oak leaves and acorns and get everything rolled out and released on that um, as well as that that feather pattern um, which I don't have that one sitting in front of me so I can't give you can't give you a sneak peek on that one all right another leaf here we're gonna line that stem again just like I did the first one you notice the angle that I run that at. I start that angle facing up, and then I fade that down as we go, kind of rolling along uh, as that leaf's opening up there. And when I 
use this thumbprint, I kind of see it just as as I do my bevel. Like, there's not a limited amount of times I can go over that. I can keep working on that and fading that and smoothing things out as I need. Okay, a couple little tips as I get down into this last uh, flower where I'm running this. I'm not just laying that flat and hitting that in there because I don't want the both ends of that tool to leave an impression. I'm actually gonna tip that up there so it fades that back end out of there. So that just fades away like that and there's not a hard line there. So we wanna be able to soften that line to the back of the tool. The next thing is I'm running right out there next to that edge, kind of creating uh, creating that little little ridge right on the extra, on the outside, and it kind of highlights that pedal a little bit. Uh, Bob, you're on back bevel down the center stem, right on those. Uh, I've kind of played with one of those one time. I don't um, I don't have one here in my block, otherwise I'd <laughs> be able to. Kind of show everybody what uh, what you're talking about there with the back bevel, but it uh, pretty neat tool. It um, essentially bevels back up and kind of rounds that stem the other way as well. Oh, Bobby makes them to fit into a swivel knife. I didn't know that. Um, that's pretty neat. I hadn't seen those ones yet. Okay, moving that along there. Gotta just shift that to where I can see a little bit better. Um, last few little stems here that I'm going to work that thumbprint down and then we're gonna switch tools and kind of finish out the details of the pattern here so these last last tools are gonna run pretty quick as we roll along here but this next tool I'm gonna get is just a uh, it's a little lifter it's it's one um, Barry City's came out with a like a double lot lifter that I have not gotten yet or tried but it sounds amazing so i'm going to try that and see if it's as um, gives me that result i'm looking for here this is a tool i've had from way back long time ago it's an old one from like a garage sale like ground down uh, and it works awesome uh, so i'm just going to put that on these little ridges here and you see the see the difference that makes it just pops those up um, it's a small difference, but it's kind of one of those things that the, the small things matter, right? All the little things matter, uh, especially when you're tooling here and your little things are going to add up to kind of create that overall look and that final picture that you're working on. You ever tool through a pattern and then you get to a place and realize you forgot to do something happens to me too so this leaf here i didn't uh i didn't run my thumbprint out there on those ridges but it's a nice thing you go roll along with your next tool and you'll notice if something looks out of whack Anybody else ever do that, or is that just me? Try not to, but every now and then that just happens. Um, all the time. <laughs> it's funny. Uh, Lou, you know, this is, uh, it's, well, it's a little lifter, uh, kind of a homemade lifter, but, uh, this is a little itty bitty tiny guy. So it's not like a full big 
pedal lifter. <laughs> yeah, Josh, like when you miss that line. Oh, man. That's how I recognize that stuff, Josh, because I do it too. All right. Next tool here, this is uh, just a small little cedar I'm going to put in here on these flower stems. Kind of right there at those bases. Uh, and then, uh, <laughs> yeah, they're awesome little lifters. Then I'm going to come in with a mule's foot. This is just a small mule's foot. Uh, I'm going to come in right behind those seeds. And stack in a few of those mules feet kind of faded down there and then right here on this particular pattern there's this one kind of stump where I run that stop in there and I like running the mules foot in there as well um, Jason I think uh, asking is the pedal lifter the same as the undercut beveler? I would have to look in the catalog. I've heard things kind of interchange the, um, the wording on that. This is a technically a lifter. Um, you can kind of see where it scoops in there a little bit. Um, and what I use a lot is that little round bevel. Um, I use that in place of any kind of big lift. That lifter I just showed you, I never use it. I don't know why it's still sitting in my in my tool block because I never use it. I always use this uh, this checkered round bevel, and it works great as kind of an undershot bevel or whatever. But it's that's just actually a round checkered bevel. Uh, but I'm okay. What do we got in my hand here? Mule's foot. There we go. One more spot to use that. Now we got our mules fit in there. I'm gonna grab a small little vayner. Uh, Jake, the size of my mall, I think this is either a 16 or a 20 ounce. Um, it's in there somewhere. It's one of the small malls of Berry Kings. Okay. So I'm uh, using this this vayner really tipping it on edge um, just to get the um, just to get that edge of that point again I don't want to lay this and get a full imprint I want to fade and soften that tool there and I use that on the outside of those stems and that helps create kind of that rounded look of that stem um, just gives a little more texture and helps those stand apart from the other uh, the other pieces of the vine work next place i'm going to use this banner is in my leaves um, I come in right there next to that stem um, again tipped up softening that as we go i try to bounce those out where if I do one on one side um, of the stem, then I do one on the other side, rotating those around as we go so they kind of look a little more natural. Same thing here. I'm going to tip those up towards that point, come along on the inside of it as well. Tip those up there. Okay, we are getting down there. Just a uh, few more tools to use here. I'm gonna grab that little small bevel just while I'm here and touch up the bottom side of that leaf. Okay, next let's look at our flower centers. Um, I'm gonna use just a real simple, plain, um, smooth one. It fits good in these little flowers, um, but 
any flower center you want to use, welcome to it. Now I'm going to come along with this center liner. So same thing, it's a vertical line like my thumbprint, but you can see that little half round um, kind of concave end of that. And that's going to fit right around that center there. You can kind of hear I start off light on the edge. Then I get a little heavier in the middle of that pedal. And then fade off some. That's going to help... Uh, Help bring some definition and really make those centers pop a little bit. Spin that around, get the other side of those as well. I'm trying to be careful not to hit my lifter on my actual flower center. Um, that's especially important if you're using a center that has the little seeds around it. Um, those are easy to kind of run over with your center liner so you got to be careful not the end of the world because um, i'll show you here in a minute we're going to retouch that center anyhow uh, but before we do that i'm going to come back with that extra steep checker bevel and we're going to retouch these sides of our petals and bring those right back down to the center there Sharpen those lines up a little bit. So this way of doing your flower centers, a little more effort, takes a little bit more time, um, but it's, it's worth it in the long run for the end result that you get. Again, I said we're going to retouch that, so let's uh, grab that center again. Bob use, he uses a stop there, so yeah, in running those into the center, um, I don't would like this is my lifter, but a stop would be kind of the same idea. You'd come in right next to there and hit that in there. Yeah, that looks that looks great as well. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna grab my round bevel again and just touch up a few of these little spots um, where I kind of use that as a lifter and. Crisp those up some. Uh, and right here where this one folds over and uh, it doesn't have a whole lot of life to it where it's folded over. So I'm going to come in here with this. Give that a lot more life there where it folds over. So that does wonders with that little tool there. Okay, next thing, before we get to my favorite part, the decorative cuts, I'm going to run a bar grounder uh, in the backgrounds here on this. Um, again, trying to just kind of fade these out, um, or fan these out, excuse me, in those small spaces keep those running in the same direction so it's not just a globbed up mess in there oh yeah the extra steep round bevel does wonders it sure does I love that tool 
That uh, can't use it as many places as I do the flat bevel, but I probably love it even more than I do the, <laughs> the regular one. Okay, now with this bar grounder, what you can do too, if, uh, if we were gonna just be antiquing this or, or doing dyed borders or kind of anything like that, um, gives you some options, but on the outside edge where there's not the background at, I can still come in and tip that back and fan those background spaces just a little bit. And it'll just help give a little bit more definition to that pound or to that uh, little definition of that pattern when you when it picks up some antique on that outside edge. Um, the size of this, I believe this is a 25, um, which is pretty dang small, realistically, for, um, for most applications. Um, I think you can go a little bit bigger and be, be just fine. <laughs> this is the, what, the 7 seed or the 9 seed, whichever one, the biggest, the biggest one of my set. Um, which you can see I'm using that in some pretty tiny spaces and getting by with it just fine. So it's pretty, pretty small. It's a set that I'd had for a long time though and um, just kind of got used to running it really. Uh, and I don't do a whole lot of really big work. Most of my work is smaller work like this. So it works out pretty good. If I was doing a ton of saddle work though, I wouldn't want to use that. Um, yeah, 30 is probably really good, Bob. I would, I was, I've been thinking about getting another set of them too that are, that are a little bit bigger there. Okay, now for my favorite part, we're gonna come in for these decorative cuts, um, give that final, final kind of breath of life to what we're doing here. And there's no, Definite right or wrong, just a few kind of guidelines I like to follow on these. But if you've um, been in my drawing course and we talk about kind of some of those center lines that we're pulling to, um, that's where I'm going to be pulling those cuts towards as well. Start them deep, fade them off light. Um, especially in in these flowers here, as we're pulling those, I want to pull those down to the center. But the more I can fade those off and lighten them up, it's going to add that definition coming out of the center there. Oh, Bob, a 30 is too large for belts. Oh, that's good to know on those. Maybe we'll get in on that 27 or something size. A lot of times with these cuts, you know, less can be more. Um, it's really just a matter of less cuts well-placed are way better than more cuts in a wrong spot. <laughs> So all it takes is, is a few cuts and not kind of pulling in the right direction or not faded out right. Um, and it can really, really detract and um, take a lot away from your, all your work that you've been doing on your pattern. So I think it could be one of the, you know, maybe one of the harder aspects to tooling to get the hang of um, and I and I think a lot of that comes from worrying about it has to be right which you know there's different ways to do it um, it doesn't have to be right but you got to be be willing to be wrong I guess 
you know, you can you can do some stuff with your decorative cuts that does screw your work up for sure. You know, getting too aggressive with them or like I said, too many or not pulling them in the right direction and that sort of things um, to where it's not adding to your flow. It takes away from it. But if you're not willing to take a chance and try some new things with them, um, then you don't get that stuff figured out. Um, and that's, mistakes aren't bad. Mistakes are awesome if you take the time to learn from them. So that doesn't matter what you're doing, whether it's building belts and tooling or digging a ditch. I mean, being willing to make those mistakes and learn from them as you go um, is what's going to really drive improvement anyways. So there we have it. That um, That is our flower and leaf pattern. Again, that is straight from the... Um, from the pattern book. Let's see if I can figure out which page we go on. There we go. It's um, it's not the one on the end. It's going to be the only one in the book that has the leaves in there for the pattern. So um, second one off the edge. If you're if you are checking checking your book for that, um, that is in there. But hopefully um, you guys caught a couple things that. Um, some pointers and, and tricks that have helped. Uh, hopefully that'll help you not just this pattern, but some of your other stuff you're working on too. So I uh, appreciate you guys spending the time hanging out, uh, all the comments and feedback that sure makes it easier. Um, when I got some questions to answer and, and some things to talk about, I know some of these patterns can get, get to go in a little while, but um, I, I think there's value in being able to see that tool all the way out. Um, if it's something you're trying to tackle, um, and having trouble with that. So thank you guys. I appreciate it. Have a great night. Again, leave any further questions or comments um, on here for me, both on Facebook and on YouTube, uh, and I'll try to get back to you guys on those. Have a great day.